Hello and welcome to episode 6 of Gaming Together, a cooperative podcast. I'm your host, Nave, and I'm here with my co-op partner, Philip. Yeah, and it's good to be here, Nave. Each podcast, we're going to play through a cooperative experience, and we're going to relay to you, the listener, if this game is the crim de la crim of co-op, or if it's something better off playing solo. So, Philip. Yes, Nave. What have you been playing recently? Well, Nave, I have been playing, uh, you're not going to ask me how I am? We're just going to go around the games we're playing? No. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, what are you going to say? You're going to be like, oh, I'm, I'm feeling happy. <laughs> so I've been playing. Hey, I'm content. trying to say what I've been playing. What are you doing? I've been playing some <laughs> Battlefront 2, some Kenji, and the Pokemon TCG. Uh, is this the new Battlefront 2 or the old the one? The new one, of course. The old one. I'm really upset about the naming scheme yeah, of they that series. Yeah, did not work that one out. I do have the old one on Steam, though. I do too, yeah. and, and the the lobbies are still full. I think we mentioned it in one of the podcasts already. Probably, but it's like they have Battlefront One and Battlefront Two, and then the third game is Battlefront, and then the, the fourth game is Battlefront Two. So it's like, hey, don't forget, um, there was a Battlefront PSP game too in the mix after Battlefront Two, I think. What was it called? Like Frontal Assault or something like that? Yeah, it was something like that. I, my first thought was Rogue Squadron, but that was the movie or whatever. No, Rogue Squadron is a game oh, is where you're, you're clones. Yeah, you're like clones of like superior people. Do you not know this game? Wait, are you talking about um, Republic Commandos? Oh, no. I am talking about that. Yeah. What's Rogue Squadron? Is that a flying game? I'm, that might have been... Oh, Rogue Squadron, yeah. Uh, there was like three Rogue Squadron games. I remember now. Then they were vehicle based, and it was just like you would just do different missions in vehicles. <laughs> this is really going back. <laughs> what are we talking? About? We're talking about Rogue Squadron. <laughs> I think it was originally on uh, Nintendo sixty four, but then they came out with sequels that were on PlayStation GameCube era. I think. Yeah, you know, we could look. Yeah, this I one. think I know. Cause and and you're like you're flying in a Tie Fighter and stuff, or like an X Wing. It's just like a it's just like Ace Combat. Yeah, but. But it was more focused on Star Wars. Yeah, but I've been playing Battlefront 2. It's good. Uh, Maybe we can do a future episode. It has a co-op mode. And I think the whole campaign is co-op, but I don't know if it's online co-op. We'll have to check it out. Yeah, I have that game already, so I can just load it up and mess with it. Yeah, but it's good. Yeah, you know, it's a pretty good shooter. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's it's like the, the, the aesthetic of some of the planets is just... It's perfect how it looks. Mm-hmm. Like I like right off the top of my bat. Yes. Right off the top of my bat. Oh. I'm just gonna. I think I'm just gonna fuck up an, an analogy. <laughs> One analogy per episode. I'm just gonna completely ruin it. Well. Uh, off the top of my head. <laughs> the map that I'm thinking of. It's a multiplayer map. It's the ice level. Mm-hmm. Do you do you remember talking about a hot? Or are you talking about the salt know. place? That's like red. No, it's it's ice. It's like okay. legit ice. Like you're walking, you're running through the caves, and like come, you come out, and it's just like a frozen planet. Yeah. That fucking. Sometimes I just stare at the walls and of the caves and stuff where the icicles are, and how the light reflects off of it, or like how the light hits the snow on the outside. I'm like, I wouldn't want to be there. No. Because be I fucking terrible. really hate the winter, but I love looking at it. Well, those are my games. Uh, I know I had to pull you away from Mass Effect 2 just so we could record the podcast. Uh, well, wait a second, because I want to hear about Kinchi. Oh, Kinchi? Have you yeah, played it? Yeah, that's going to be... It's like Pokemon Battlefront and then this game no, that probably no one knows. Okay, <laughs> uh, Kinchi. It's actually kind of an older like RPG slash RTS survival game. If you... like, It's one of those games where going in, it's going to be incredibly hard. It's like Morrowind where you don't directly do like combat damage or anything. The way I like to describe it is The Sims, but in Fallout style, where like you point and click, you tell people where to go. But they... It's like post-apocalyptic. Yeah, it is. And it has like a fantastic world building. Like the whole premise is giant robots used to roam the planet that were built by humans. And you're also on like an alien planet at the same time. So there's aliens, 
which there's like multiple races. You have, uh, I don't even remember what they're called. Uh, basically, they look like spiky Sonic the Hedgehog, where they're just like you know, rhino skin, and they're super tough, and all they do is want to fight. That's all they do. And they're big tough boys, and they just want to beat you up. Then there's the humans, which they divide it into two races, white people and black people. And they are super racist. Just like real life. Yeah, that, that's the only <laughs> people I know, I guess. And they have, like, different archetypes. Like, the white people are um, super Roman, I guess. Like, they're very, like, Holy Roman Empire. Where they have, like... Oh, like... Uh, they have, like, Templars, like kind of, and Spartans, yeah. Oh. It's kind of a yeah. mixed hybrid. Where they fight for religious reasons. That's very christian sounding like they uh they fight for the eternal flame that sounds like i don't know if this is similar at all but it makes me think of warhammer 40k yeah with the space marines i don't i know nothing about that the fucking game but for some reason in my head the warhammer space marines just popped up so there's those guys but then there's my favorite people which are the hive which are just bug people they just kind of exist they had like different hives. Like there's the fog fogmen, which are bugs that live in this big foggy zone, and they just run out screaming and they attack people and then they take them back to their little camps and then they devour them and like cannibalize them. And then there's like other hive which are just like pure traders and they will just chase you down or you'll just be like I don't know out hunting in the wild. And a trading party will come up and be like, hello, you're going to buy our, our stuff today? We got excellent stuff for you to buy. And you're like, no, thanks. I'm not interested. And they're like, you should really buy our stuff. How about you buy a lantern? And they'll like follow you as you're like traversing the wilderness. And it's like, not even like they're in RuneScape. Yeah. Like it's literally like they right click and click follow. And you'll be running at full speed. And this whole like caravan will be chasing you, trying <laughs> to get you to buy stuff. And then you'll bump into like a bandit party. And all of a sudden, everybody's just fighting. And this game is so hard. I have like over 200 hours in it, and I still die all the time. Because it almost comes down to like luck, where you're like, okay, I just need to go out and collect some copper so I can sell it in town to buy food because I'm starving to death. And then you go out there, and you happen to bump into a gorilla. Like, <laughs> the gorilla just runs up and just like one hits you and just knocks you out, and you're like, oh god, I'm dead. But there's, like, mods that you get, like, usually it's, like, the base is, like, oh, you're supposed to only have maybe eight people that you're controlling at once in your little adventure party. Well, I get the mod, of course, where I can have 40 people, and all of a sudden it's a real-time strategy game where I have multiple squads of individually named units. And I usually, like, each game I start a new one, I, like, name them after, like, a certain, like, naming convention. Like, oh, I'm going to name everyone after Fruits now. Or I'm going to name everybody after Dragon Ball characters. Like, and then you're, like, oh, no! Goku's dead! Like, he got surprised, punched by a gorilla, and there's, like, limb damage, too. It's not just, like, they have a health bar. No, like, depending on where you get hit, you take damage. It's like, he got punched by a gorilla, and his arm ripped off, and now he bled to death. <laughs> like, this is awful! You know, send Vegeta in, we gotta go patch him up real quick. You're like, oh no, Vegeta doesn't have any medical supplies! Goku's bleeding out! That's one of my favorite things about uh, XCOM and XCOM 2, is... Oh, yeah just naming all of your characters and then having something horrific happen to them oh, like so i had sad. some friends that used to come over and we would all get drunk and they would just watch me play XCOM with just us as a squad and just see see who dies first yeah because i would be like i would be like all right jesse where do you want to go and you're like ah uh, just take me over there i guess and then i would be like oh that's a, <laughs> that's not a good spot that's where the for monsters you. spawn and I'd, yeah i think i'm pretty sure jesse got ripped apart uh, first out of those guys and it's always pretty fun but I, I i got like viciously maimed and i was like oh i'm dying i'm gonna die first i'm like a sniper and i, I let them get behind me and yeah. there was like no way out but uh i went down and i was able to i think christian the the guy who was in the outriders podcast go listen to that episode by the way it's all right you listen to it. he came and he picked me up and took me to the evac helicopter nice Okay. And then uh, Jesse died of horrible death. Yeah, it's definitely one of those games where you make one mistake and it ruins your whole save. And you're just like, oh Which, no, it's over. Speaking of those kinds of games, uh, on Xbox Game Pass, 
I think it's Friday, a game, or maybe it has already happened, a game called Darkest Dungeon. I think you already know about this game, mm-hmm. but it's going on Game Pass. I don't know if you've played it or not yet, but it's just like that, and it's just brutally hard. No, but that's it, definitely on my list. It's like a turn-based game, but if your character dies, they die, and everyone has like a health bar, but everyone also has a sanity bar, and they can just start going crazy. And so, it's so some people are like scared of the undead, or some people are scared of the dark, and sometimes you don't know what they're scared of, and th- then you just find out in the middle of a battle, and all of a like, sudden your healer's not listening to anybody. Oh you no! Know? And it's it's really good, and it's really fast paced. So it's not like well, when you die, usually uh, when your people dies, it usually is traumatic. But it's a game where you're constantly going through people. Like there's a there's a a fresh meat every time you go back to your camp that you can recruit but whenever one of your like lieutenants dies you're just like i don't know if i can go on i i miss leonidas leonidas was the best paladin (laughs) and i don't know what i'm gonna do without him and sometimes like people will like because if your sanity meter like it either goes full or it depletes or something like that but so whenever you go and like your character goes full bar insane they can either have a a negative trait or they can get they can overcome their fear and get a really good positive bonus and that's like a and it's like a permanent buff forever like if what made them go crazy was was spiders maybe they're they're more likely to be like oh i'm arachnophobic now Mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's something like that but it's a really fun uh well it's not really fun it's stressful it's one of those games that you play if you just want to be stressed out for an extended period of time. Sounds like my kind of game. It is very rewarding. You what you said way before. Uh, I am still playing Mass Effect Two. I'm almost done. Um, if anyone's been playing it recently, uh, I just got the Reaper IFF, so I basically started the time the Galaxy Timer. It's not really a spoiler because you're not gonna know what the fuck I'm talking about. Even whenever you get to that point in the game, you're not gonna know. What I'm talking oh about. yes, the Galaxy Timer. Yeah, and so I'm about to recruit the last dude and do his loyalty mission and go straight into the end game. And because I've already done like everything, um, I've been leaving the game on overnight. Like I've been turning the Xbox off, but I haven't been closing the program out. So mm-hmm. the game's cl- internal clock has rolled over. Like it went to nine 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 and then rolled over to zero hours. So I'm That's back weird. at 25 hours again, which is probably about the. It's probably pretty close to how long I've actually been playing. I've probably been playing it for like 30 to 40 hours at this point. Just doing everything, like absorbing so much lore into my brain. It's hard to think about anything else. Yeah, you were reading off some lore to me earlier. Oh, yeah. it's There's some really good side missions, especially the DLC that I never got to play as a kid. Because I was one of those anomalies, I think you were as well, where I only played through Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3 one time mm-hmm. with one character, you know. And so I never did anything else. And so in my head, that was like how everything went. It Kind of like a Telltale game, you know? Yeah, you, like you that's can my canon those more easily. Yeah, like Telltale games are a lot shorter. And so it's not like a 30-hour epic story where you're doing all this crap. I mean, you could probably beeline through Mass Effect. But why? Why? You know, I mean, if it's your second time through, then yeah, sure. But I mean, in your first try, why would you do that? Why would you play the game like that? Yeah, it's but, really um, not the intended play style, I don't think. I think you're supposed to just almost do the Star Trek thing of like, oh, we're just going to fly around space and do stuff with the crew. But what I really like is the game doesn't force you to do all of that side content it doesn't force you to do the loyalty missions for your character it is like hey you should probably do this but it's it's like if not though yeah there's the main mission right there if you want to keep going if you don't care about your teammates which some people i guess don't but i mean why are you playing mass effect 2 if you don't care about your teammates yeah you can just go play destiny if you just want to do space adventure (laughs) i was gonna say halo (laughs) same way shoot stuff yeah um I mean, I think I'm pretty sure I'm going to go from Mass Effect 2 straight into Mass Effect 3. Um, I think that the ball, I, I don't think I, I don't think I can stop the momentum. Are you going to go back point. to Andromeda after that? No. It's on Game Pass. I, I am, you uh, have a Series X now, so it might be better. Well, I own it, and Andromeda suffers from bad game design. 
like as far as it it forces you like i you remember i was saying like you remember the thing i said uh, 45 seconds ago where i like how it doesn't force you to do this icon yes, <laughs> but uh the, i remember uh, oh man i am i'm on one um I think Andromeda, if I remember correctly, it forces you to do a lot of side content. And it's so, they're so hollow. They're so shallow. One of, whichever one of those makes sense in that sentence. Um, they're unfun. There's no gratifying reward. The writing is pretty bad. I mean, I feel bad for the Bioware team because this was like, this wasn't Bioware's A team. It wasn't Bioware's B team. It was like their C team that made Mass Effect Andromeda. And it was supposed to be an entirely different fucking thing. Like they, they had, it was going to be like No Man's Sky. Yeah. And when No Man's Sky got announced, they were like, oh shit, they're doing the thing that we were trying to do. And they went, they went ahead and soldiered through it, but they couldn't get the procedural generation shit to work. On top of the fact that it's running on Frostbite, which is made primarily for first person shooters. It's developed by DICE. So, um, you know, like for Battlefield and Battlefront. Yeah. Looping around to that fucking game again. We'll get there. That's why the game is so beautiful, because Frostbite Engine is really good at that. Where was I going? We were talking oh, about Andromeda the, uh, and how it's poorly designed. They Well, yeah, I, I was... The reason why I feel bad for the Andromeda team is because they basically got three quarters of the way through the game and then just completely scrapped it all. Because they were mostly just trying to get this damn procedurally generated world system to work properly, and they really couldn't fucking swing it. It's another reason why, because they were they were relying on procedural generation so much, like all of the facial animations and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like all of the Mass Effects do this, but something was wrong in Mass Effect Andromeda's procedural in procedural generation as far as like the the way the eyes were. Like everyone's eyes were really wide open, and they'd stare at you, and they would like they would loop animations. They would have a weird animation. They would loop it over and over again. It makes them look real stupid. It was a, it was a, it was a lol cow for a second on yeah. Twitter. And you still see stuff like uh, my face is tired was a meme because one of the first conversations you have with the, with the NPC, she says my face is tired while making a horrific, like uncanny Valley face, facial expression. It was not good. And I, I, I it sucked. Cause that was one of the last, I would say one of the last games I bought for full price, but it was one of the last games. I've only bought a handful for since that was years ago. Because I was like, there's no way Mass Effect's gonna be bad, right? And it came right. out, the reviews were horrible, and I saw the memes and I was like, it can't possibly be this bad, right? And then I bought it for sixty, and then three weeks later it was because I waited like a, a month or so for it for patches and stuff but i bought it at 60 and then like three or four weeks after i bought it ea came out and they were like no more patches for this game we are officially abandoning mass effect andromeda oh my god and i was like no this can be fixed some of this can be fixed some of it was ingrained in the game like little did i know at that time it is a boring fucking game the shooting is pretty good but like that's not what you're doing in Mass Effect. You're not playing Mass Effect to play Gears of War. You're playing Gears of War to play Gears of War. You play Mass Effect to have this awesome story and awesome characters. And I can't remember the single character's name from fucking Mass Effect Andromeda. I remember there is one Asari who is like the most annoying little piece of shit that I've ever fucking wow. had the bad graces to encounter in a game like this. I wanted to wring her fucking neck every time I heard her speak. And I was like, because she, she, apparently she's supposed to be like a child. She's like 79 years old, but that's like a, that's like mid to late teenager. So it's like, oh, if this is what fucking children are like, holy shit. I don't, oh God. It makes you mean, because it's like, I don't even, I don't even believe that phenomenon either. It's like, oh, she's a child, but yeah, she's been alive for 79 years. Are they, are that, is that race just stupid? Like, no, their brain just, just developed slowly over time. Forever? It's like. You think you pick up pick up on things, you know. I just I don't remember a single quote from her or anything. All I remember is every time she spoke, I wanted to kill her. So, and I had her in my team because she was a biotic. So I was like, or I think she was a biotic. I mean, it it goes to reason that she would be a biotic because yeah. she's an Asari. But which um for you people out there, co-op partners that haven't played Mass Effect, 
the Asari are the the blue squid head aliens, right? I don't know if you mentioned yeah, that they they're... were aliens. You start calling them Asaris. Uh, yeah, they, yeah, they're the blue ones. Uh, they're it's only a female race. It's really cool. This is the Mass Effect episode. I've co-opted. We're not talking about. We haven't even mentioned the oh, game yeah. we're supposed to be talking about yet. Do you want to? Okay, so we let's cut that there. Okay. Yeah, sorry, the blue aliens. Just Google it. Yeah. All right. Blue aliens. Uh, do you want to talk about the rest of the stuff you have written here in the notes, or do you want to go into the game? You know what? We might as well. I mean, we can just keep going. Do you want to keep going, or do we want to? Okay. How about this? Let's skip everything that we wrote down in the notes right here and move along. Sound okay. good? You're go. All right. No, I changed my mind. We're going to talk about this stuff. So, Nave, you know okay. how last episode we were talking about balloons? Uh, balloons Tower Defense. Yeah. yeah. So, like, in my class, I'm learning cyber system operations, which means we have computers. Oh, my God. Are you playing Balloons Tower Defense No, in class? I'm not playing Balloons Tower Defense in class. But we bring our own laptops in, like our personal laptops, because, you know, Air Force laptops are terrible. Don't tell the enemy. But our laptops are so <laughs> slow. So they're like, just bring in your own. It'll be faster to do everything in class. It's like, cool. Well, the Air Force believes in like 15 minute breaks, like every hour, pretty much, for training purposes. Like, we have to have time to understand the information. And I look over the guy that's sitting, like, kind of like next to me. And he was playing Balloons Tower Defense. Oh and I'm like, yo, dog, God. is that Balloons Tower Defense 5? And he's like, 6, bro. And I'm like, sick. <laughs> Dude, yeah, because I don't know why, but they have 5 released on the Xbox, but not 6. I'm uh, like, come on, give me, I'm like, give me my balloon You're going to get them, monkeys. them super monkeys? And he's like, bro, you don't even know about them super monkeys. You know, and I look over there and it's just like his whole screen is lit up of just things just exploding as he's popping all these balloons. And I'm like, dude, balloons is an awesome game to multi. It's a good multitasking game, man, because it's a set it and forget it kind of game. Like the game doesn't it's like Pokemon. The yeah, game doesn't like progress turn-based. until you push the button. Yeah. And I mean, like, like shit can go wrong when you're not paying attention. But like the game only goes wave after wave. Like, so there's only so many balloons that are going to show up before it stops and goes, hey, you OK, man? Are you alive? Yeah. Are you still paying attention? Yeah, so I used to do that. I would play three games at once. This is how fucking sweaty I was. I would play Balloons Tower Defense. Mm-hmm. I would be. I would play Clicker Hero, which is a fucking clicking game. That's one of those games where you press. Oh you, yes. You, 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 on your phone, you tap it, and then it does one damage, and then it has ten health. So you tap ten times, and it's dead. And now you get money. Nice. And then you make your you make your tap do two damage. Now you're doing two damage. And then eventually you're doing 78 quadrillion pentillion damage. You're doing like 76.345 E100. You know oh, what I the mean? Like, box games. I got gotcha. you. Oh, I I can't help it. I love watching numbers just get exponentially higher. And so I always get trapped by it. Like there's a couple of them that are for free on the Xbox. And I always end up spending money on them. Because I, it gets to the point where it's like, oh, okay, I've played this game for like 50 hours. And I'm having fun. I'm going to kick them $10. Yeah. You know, I'm eating. You know, my bills are paid. Here's $10. I'm going to buy this fucking uh, flying squirrel pet, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> okay. or, or something. Yeah. You know, it's not like I'm like, oh, God, I got to get stronger. It's always like, I'll buy this cosmetic thing, you know, fuck it. But, um, oh, man, the lo- most recent one was a Dungeons and Dragons themed one. I don't even remember what it was called, but I, j- I get I get wrapped up in those games. Okay, but what was the third game you were playing? Because we got Balloons, we got Clicker Hero, and what was going on? What else was there? Oh, it's just insert any game on the PlayStation. Okay. Like, I was playing playing the the first Red Faction, like the PS2 Classic. Because it was like, I was playing Clicker Hero on my phone, I was playing Balloons on my Xbox, and I was streaming my Xbox to my PC, so I had that screen. And then on my TV, I was playing the PlayStation 4. And so I was playing, like, Uncharted or something. And every time I'd get through a firefight, I'd click next i set up my wave on my xbox and then fuck with my clicker here like level everybody up and then start playing uncharted again you know and every now and then i'd pause the game and look at my screens it's like (laughs) dude system check if you walked into that room you would like be like what is going on in here man (laughs) you know like you laugh at that but like I, i try to do the same thing like i don't know i just love multitask gaming when i can like for instance i'll always be like 
have my phone open to Dragon Ball Legends because that is also a click it and forget it because most of the time you're grinding out on levels just for resources and there's like an auto button so i just have to like pick my fighters pick the level and just hit go and uh, they'll play through the level for me and then i'll have magic or pokemon tcg up on my laptop and then at the same time i'll have youtube playing in the background or like recently i was had Oh, the animated series the first season og stuff <laughs> playing in the background while i'm playing the pokemon tcg while i have dragon ball playing on my phone at the same time, like, I'm pretty, I feel pretty addicted to multitasking, but then also it's just like, I wouldn't really play any of these games by themselves, you know? Like, if it was just yeah. me in the room alone. Yeah, usually when I was doing Clicker Hero, I was listening to a lecture or something, or like a debate or something. Oh, a lecture like, and debate? I always had... It's awfully always high and mighty of you. <laughs> well... <laughs> How about you tell me well, what I, is about the Skinner box, huh? Yeah, I knew damn well I was addicted to pressing the button and getting the candy, you know, or yeah. whatever, the pellet, whatever, the skitter box. It's when but, they um, put the rat in the box and they don't know if it's dead or not, right? No, that's the fucking Schroeder, that's same Schrodinger's thing, right? cat. No, yeah, yeah, it was definitely... You're uh, making me angry <laughs> it's right the same now. Thing. And then they push a button and it feeds the rat. <laughs> that might be dead or alive, you know? I don't know what they do to the, the cat in the box. I think they pump it with fucking gas that may or may not be poison or something <laughs> is it that what the they Schrodinger's do cat yeah they i think they pump gas in there and they don't know it's a button that says one of these valves opens but we don't know which one it opens so now you don't know if it's dead or alive in there i don't even know if they really did that i think that was just like a, a thought like the thought trolley game. problem it's just like a thought thing yeah and of course you kill the five people yeah you, in the trolley you, you turn the trolley so it hits the cat and the rat that's in the box Kill yeah, maybe it, killing it's like both a quick of them time event. yeah it's not like a quick time event where as soon as the tr first two train cart the first two uh wheels go across the thing you pull it so that the second two wheels it like tokyo drifts into all of them and that's the renegade path yeah you gotta have at Call least 50 renegade path. points yeah that's all and I where, can think about. if you take the yeah, and if you take the other path, then you're playing balloons in a cyber ops class, you know? <laughs> you're, like, learning how to stop cyber terrorism, and you're popping balloons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be like that, though. What was that movie? I I think it was a... a what was it, like, Avengers? Where they, came, they walked into the room, and they're in, like, the fucking S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters, and they're like... That guy's playing Tetris or something. Yeah. Isn't it Avengers? Like, so yeah. And he's like, uh, uh, uh. Look, all tab, know? all tab. All right. What are we uh, talking about? Uh, we were just talking about, uh, I don't know, just whatever happened recently. <laughs> oh, balloons in school. And then we spiraled from there. Uh, yeah, that's the only thing that's kind of relative that's happened to me, irrelevant that's happened to me recently. Has anything happened with you? No. Um, I did get a. We got a question. This wasn't really a write-in, because it was just asked to me to my face. <laughs> but um, nice. they were listening. Uh, I was listening with some friends. I don't remember who it was all, off the top of my head. I'm sorry. I've name-dropped all the ones it could have been already. So it's one of them. It's one of it's Jesse Dontre. Yeah, one of them. Christian, one of them. Um, I think so, at least. They asked you when you... Well, you brought up that you don't have your old account anymore. Whenever you guys were talking about like playing Rock Band, I don't remember if it was in the Rock Band episode or if it was in the Action Sack episode. It probably was in the Action Sack episode. Mm -hmm. But um, they asked what happened to your old Tub account. They asked if you got banned for being toxic in yeah. messages or something. No, I never got banned. Um, I don't even think I ever got like a mute ban or anything like that. But what happened to my account was I made it whenever I was, I don't know, 12 or something like that like probably the same time you made your account no it was like back on original xbox too like because i was playing halo 2 on my original xbox online so it was way yeah, back when our boys, our boys william and caleb and then weren't you yeah and this is back whenever it was like before at&t bought msn or whatever so or was it no yeah because like my email address i used on my account was like 
a AOL MSN online account or something like that. Like it wasn't even yeah, like a, ancient yeah, it was address. And it's to the point, oh yeah, like and it doesn't I don't even think I can log into the account anymore. Because that was the problem was like as a service, it just got absorbed through acquisitions where I'm trying to remember who bought who, but it was like an AT&T account that turned into an MSN account or something that then became owned by Hotmail somehow or something like that. But anyways, I had never logged into my account. It was just on my Xbox. I logged in like once when I first got my 360. And then for years, I never had to log in again. Even whenever my Xbox like red ringed or whatever, like I still had my hard drive that I kept with me. I didn't like send it in to get fixed. So I could just plug my hard drive in and my accounts were all there. Or I would just do a system, like the system transfer whenever I needed to upgrade hard drives. Or I would keep it on a memory card. So I never needed to log in because I always just had a physical copy of my account on a memory card. Oh, those are relics of the past, aren't they? Memory, I know, cards. memory cards. It wasn't oh, even a USB. It. it was just a memory card designed for the Xbox. 16 it megabytes. It looks just like a knockoff PlayStation 2 memory card. But it... <laughs> But then Xbox decided they, they were going to do um, like the new, what was it? The new Xbox Connect dashboard thing or whatever. The Xbox next Experience. Xbox Experience or something. Yeah, that was it. And for that, uh, it did like a full, not like system wipe, but a full system update that required you to log in. Well, the problem was I didn't know my login info, but I had probably thousands of dollars in downloadable content in rock band songs, in arcade games, because, uh, like, that was all I was, like, spending my money on. It was, like, every two weeks or so, I would go and buy a $20 uh, Xbox card just so I could buy more games. That is, like, a horror story for people in the digital age where you're just getting locked out of your account, the, like, your primary account. Like, I don't know. I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to think about it. Yeah, that'd be it's, it's so, so tragic if it happened again. It's so it would be so traumatizing. I mean, the the best case is there is Game Pass. Yeah. For, for the hundredth time, it was sponsored by Game Pass Gaming Together podcast. I wish. Um, the uh, you could get that and have a bunch of games right off the bat, but it's still like if you were already paying for Game Pass, like if you had prepaid for Game Pass for like a year, and then your account went up in smoke, shit, man. Yeah, that'd be bad. But we tried to get the account back. This was my Tuv account. It was just TUV. And that was it. I had a three-letter gamer tag, too. Like, that kind of shows how old it is, because I don't even know, yeah. like, well, now they have the numbers added on to the end of gamer tags. But back then, like, you could not have simple gamer tags. It just didn't exist. Yeah, the way that it worked was uh, once a tag was taken, it was gone. Like, you can't have multiple of the same tag. Discord kind of, like, pushed that away. Because I think Microsoft tried to emulate how Discord does it. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, they definitely tried to emulate. Because the way Discord works is you have a username, which is whatever you want. They give you a hashtag and four uh, numbers after it. And that's similar to the way the Xbox works. The good thing about Xbox is, is if you do come up with a unique gamer tag, the hashtag at the end won't pop up. So you won't have numbers at the end of your name. Um, so it... Well, I was about to say... I I, tr I was looking for the availability of an, a specific gamer tag. I'm not fucking saying it because I kind of want to make a secondary. Someone's account gonna steal it. With that, I dude, you don't know. All right, I I know for a fact that two people that play Rock Band Four are listening to this, and mm. if they heard me say that gamer tag, they would probably fucking take it. Damn. Like if I if I talked about it and waited for a few days so that you we can shoot this up <laughs> into the internet, and they heard that. And they, they would be like, oh, I want that. That's my gamer tag now. You know, it, I would lose something. I would lose a friend, too, because I'd be fucking angry. <laughs> you, I would blame them immediately. You log in and you see you know, this gamer tag on the friends list. And you're like, oh, no, it happened. Which is cool, too, because on, on the Xbox, I don't know if it works on PlayStation, but um, you open up your friends list. I have like three, like two or three hundred people on there. Mm -hmm. And I always have like 90, 100 people online at any time, as long as it's not too late. and so it's like a big jumbled mess, but right at the very top, if you just press A on the friends list and then A again immediately, it'll show you who's in what games. 
and it always has who it's like if there are six people in a specific game that game's on the top yeah so if like six people are playing call of duty which is usually the first one anyway they're all at the top and the cool thing is is whenever the rivals challenge weeks reset on rock band four which is thursdays i think i every time i click on that there's like 15 people on rock band four and i'm just like look at these lobbies i can join right now oh so many Ooh, available yes. lobbies I'm ready yeah but which is funny because i never really play i usually play on saturdays but i always notice that oh, rock, rock band saturdays band. so we tried to like recover the account in every way we called support multiple times spent like hours on the phone had my mama helping me i love you mama shout out and we could not get them to give us access to the account because they were like, hey, do you have access to the email account associated with this account? I'd be like, no, because it's been acquired and it's a, I don't know, nine-year-old account at this point. Like, it, like this email doesn't exist anymore. And they're like, okay, that's fine. Can you answer the security question? And I'm like, the security question I made whenever I was 11, you know? Like, and it, I'm like, I don't know, 15 now or something. Even know what it was for? Yeah, like, and I'm like, yeah, I, I don't, don't know. Sorry. It's like, okay, can you tell it's me like, what the credit what card number? Food? Yeah. <laughs> What's do you know what the the credit card is on the account? And I'm like, uh, mom, what credit card did you have five years ago on my Xbox account? Because we never used her credit card on the account. I always just bought pre prepaid, uh, you know, cards like gamer. Was it the gamer money? Xbox, they're Microsoft called, points? Uh, Microsoft points. Uh, they're, yeah. they're, they're, that's gone now. It's just yeah, dollar it's just now. American points. Yeah. Give me $7 and you can have this indie arcade game. Yeah. So it's very sad. Uh, the wounds are still kind of fresh. I really don't appreciate you bringing it up. <laughs> Was it 10 years later? <laughs> it still hurts. So in the middle of that, not in the middle of that the very beginning you were like no 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 i don't i've never i didn't i didn't get banned i don't even think i ever got banned it made me think of the time i got chat banned now there is th there was a cascade of oh, events no. where I, my entire account basically got locked down for in like two days and so like and it extended to a different platform so what i was doing was i was screwing around on Rainbow Six Siege, which is one of the most toxic places you can be on the on on a console, is, is in that fucking lobby. And uh, I don't remember who, but somebody was screwing around with me, and my friend was there, and so I made a message, and I sent it to that guy, and the guy sent it back, like sent something horrible back to me, and then I sent that to my friend, and my friend reported it sarcastically, and I got chat banned. Oh, no. <laughs> for three days. Okay, so I'm chat banned for three days. I don't know what happened. I don't know if, like, this caused people to look at my account. But um, in my bio, every time you look at my bio on my Xbox, on my Xbox profile, it's always just a, usually just a single lyric from a song. The lyric happened to be a Tyler, the Creator song. And it said, got all the black bitches mad because my main bitch vanilla. And I always thought that that was funny. So my whole account gets fucking restricted. Like the next day, my whole account goes on lockdown. And I just, I had code of conduct on everything. Oh no. And it was like, yeah, the code of like, conduct ban. <laughs> All right. So that same day I'm, I'm playing uh, Jackbox games with my friends and they're all at their house. This is like in the middle of the quarantine. So they can't come over or, mm -hmm. or they don't want to, I don't know. A bunch of pussies, but, um, they were like just stream it on mixer which is a dead streaming platform now rest in peace it's gone now they're like stream it on mixer and we'll just hook it up to our phones and play because mixer was really good because the latency between what i saw and what they saw was infinitely smaller than it is on twitch on twitch there's like five to 20 seconds between what i see and what you guys see on mixer it would be like one second it, i don't know how what kind of witchcraft microsoft did Microsoft owned Mixer, by the way, and so which is why I got shut down because they <laughs> gave up on it. Yeah. So yeah, they would they would watch me stream the game out, and so I we were all in a party, and I was like, okay, I'm going to just turn off the party chat and my microphone so that because I know this is going to get belligerent because we're all drinking. I don't and I don't want to get banned on here also, and. 
I had there were two black people in there, and so someone inevitably wrote the N word oh on one God. of the, one of the prompts, and then immediately got banned. Like a second later, as what? soon as the prompt went up, as soon as the thing went up, my stream went down. And on my side, I didn't know, but on their side, they're like, "Oh shit, what happened, Austin?" And because we're all laughing because it's everything's whatever we were talking about is funny, and then. They're like, your stream's down. And I was like, what? Okay, I'll just restart it. And I went to restart it, and it's like, you're banned on Mixer for oh, like my two God. months. And I was like, ah, oh. I just got, it was a cascade of bans, dude. Like, just a repeat offender, apparently. Wow, you really need to work on your code of conduct, Nave. You know, in my clean gaming environments, I don't appreciate you bringing him all this muck around. That's yeah. so funny. I mean, though. It makes me mad too. Yeah, I bet. Like, that's I'd, on my, that's in so my file mad. now. Oh yeah, your Microsoft file. Someone's gonna bring yeah, it up. I couldn't. I couldn't change my bro- my bio by the way for like three months. It just said code oh, of conduct there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was the the same guy who I sent the message to who got my chat banned. Thought it was funny, so he did it to my account too and got my shit banned there too because oh, i probably wow. threw a fit because if your chat banned if your comms banned you cannot message you can't be in parties you can't be in public chat your <laughs> microphone privileges are gone yeah so There's no talk i had to like i have like five accounts on my xbox so i would just get on another account and join the party with that one and then play on a different <laughs> controller <laughs> it's like useless but uh, what are we even talking about uh we were just about to get to our game so have we mentioned it once yet? No, we have not. It has not come up. You, they've read the, they've read the title by now. Uh-huh. It's scrolled by, like seventy times by now. Yeah, probably. So our our game of the week that we played through. Wait, wait, wait. Let's take a break. Oh yeah, good idea. Let's take a break. Let's get into it. Serious mode. So nave. <laughs> so nave. Our game this week. The game that was... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is that a question? No. <laughs> so Dave, the game we played this week is Ocarina of Time. But wait, I know you're gonna you're about to say, but Philip. But Philip, that game is old. No, that's not what you're supposed to say. You're supposed to say <laughs> But Philip, Ocarina of Time's a one player game. It's impossible. Oh, sorry. I had the script minimized. <laughs> okay for you co-op listeners at home we actually don't have a script it's um just like a notepad that has like random bullets on it that say things like brief description of game even though we're going to talk about it for you know the next 20 minutes most likely but yeah ocarina of time single player game that we played in co-op so how would you describe ocarina of time in a brief description of game uh this game's old as shit it looks bad. Everything's like a pixelated JPEG. We're playing it on like HD monitors. Yeah. We're playing this emulated on the PC and you were, you were using these mods so that we can connect to each other. I don't think we mentioned that. We are playing this as a co-op experience. This is, this is legitimately, we were in the same game. It looks bad. There was a lot of horrible like artifacting because of the emulation, which is probably not the game's fault. I mean, it's not the game's fault that it looks bad in HD also, like, to be fair. Whoa, I think um, you're giving it too many passes. It's the game's fault. If it looked better (laughs) back then, it would look better now. Yeah, usually you can't see because you're on a shitty little CRT TV that's probably like 11 inches and your face is right up to it. And you're at like less than 720 resolution, too. Dude, it's not 720. It's like... It's like four four hundred forty. What is that tiny resolution? Oh, four eighty. Four by four eighty. Four eighty. It's probably something like that. I mean, I don't know what CRT TVs like the fucking RGB plugs. Yeah. Dude. My TV Non-HD. still has those. My TV was was produced in like twenty nineteen. Still has fucking RCA cables in the back. It's pretty Mind surprising. Point. Yeah, I could plug a fucking N sixty four to that bitch. How stupid is that? It's pretty wild. We bought a we bought a tiny little TV for the our guest room just so that I can plug up my PlayStation Two and play Tony Hawk Three. It's literally all it's for is is for Tony Hawk. Occasionally we'll be playing Magic. I'll get pissed off. Someone always gets pissed off. It's Magic. And so I'll get I'll get pissed off and I go, okay, I'm playing Tony Hawk now. Fuck you guys. <laughs> and they're just like, okay, bye. And then we we'll just fuck around. 
as an old game back it was made back in 1998 when it was re- released in America on the Nintendo 64 system which was Nintendo's 64th console they finally got it right I don't know what they were doing with the other ones yeah man like the, how the Xbox one is the first Xbox console yes yes the naming conventions they are out of control with these consoles Ocarina of Time is pretty re- highly regarded by it has a large fan base and people also like to reference back to this as the cornerstone in kind of adventure action adventure titles you know what i'm saying yeah it's a very seminal game for a lot of people like it came right in this heyday of well i was gonna say a heyday of platformers but really it was like a decline of platformers what because it came out with mario 64 I think, well, I think the game, did the game come out after Mario 64? Yeah, I think it was before? like maybe a year later. Okay, well, I, what I was thinking was it was coming off of, because the, the Nintendo 64's platformers weren't very good besides Mario 64. And was, Banjo? Like, everything. And Donkey Kong well, Country? Well, those games didn't come out at the beginning, right? No, they were definitely later. Because the, especially Ban, uh, Donkey Kong Country came out with the expansion packs. So that was way later. Yeah. But, um, like... Okay, so besides Super Mario 64, like, there weren't very many good platformers, and this game came out that just... Because Mario 64 kind of revolutionized this 3D camera movement with the with the, the little cam, the camera dude that's behind you. This game also did that with Z-targeting, which is something that, that you can see echoes of Z-targeting in games today, where, like, even in games, like, a generation later, mm-hmm. in, like, Grand Theft Auto. Like, if you play Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, you use Z targeting in that game. Like, you legitimately, it's the exact same mechanic where it goes, you lock onto one guy, the camera zooms in on that guy, and now your character strafes in relation to, like, your analog stick moves him in a strafing motion in relation to where the enemy is. And that is just exactly what Z targeting is. And when we were playing this game, I'm playing it on an Xbox three uh, on an Xbox 360 controller. I don't know about you. Yeah, same. Like a wired Xbox 360 controller, and I keybound Z targeting did left trigger, and immediately I was like, dude, this is exactly like playing San Andreas for some reason. It didn't help that I was also I modded my character skin to be CJ from San Andreas. Yeah, first <laughs> but I, I was like, I was like, oh, this is this is reminiscent of what it is like to shoot people in that game, and well, then, if you skip, you the low, the, if you skip another generation, shot. just talking about Z targeting, they rip that straight into Dark Souls, and every Souls Soul like game has the Z targeting for 3D movement or camera control, not movement. Yeah, it's really. I'm trying to stop it, it, describing things by being really something. Yeah, but really, really. Yeah, it's it's uh, revolutionary. Yeah. The whole system that they had going on in there, like it must have, it must have taken a long time to try and figure something like that out, and to be able to perform it on their first try. Like this is the first Zelda game in 3D, and Super Mario 64 was the first 3D Mario game. Like they were killing it. Like I don't like they were wizards, and they're putting it on this antiquated fucking piece of tech. The little cartridges that they had. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna. Uh, that I almost went off on a tangent again. <laughs> let's let's. This is the. A- Tangent. At least for now, yeah, this, is a, this is a big episode already. But so, just to come back, brief description of the game uh, it's just a medieval fantasy adventure where you go out and you save the princess. <laughs> but we'll get too farther in when we talk about it. it's more than that. But that is the surface level. So, we want to talk about how we kind of like prepared and how we played through it. We played through using a program called Mod Loader 64, which I definitely want to recommend to everyone out there. You can play through uh, Super Mario 64, Banjo-Kazooie, I think Donkey Kong Country, and Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time with up to 20, I think, slots available in multiplayer. And this is all a publicly um, developed program. Uh, What's called open source? Yeah, open source, where people just come in, they do little tweaks and mods, they submit it up to whoever's I don't know, I think like kind of running at this point, be like, hey, uh, if you change this code, maybe the game won't crash as much. Which was your problem. Yeah, I was crashing a lot. But I actually did not get that as upset as whenever I crashed playing Outriders. Yeah, because Outriders was, 
it was tumultuous to get back into the game. Yeah, this was like I was this in the game, game and a minute later. Yeah, it, it, the the bad part would be that you spawned somewhere very inconvenient almost every time. Yeah, but because I don't know, I don't know if you guys have, I don't know if the listeners have played Ocarina of Time. I mean, it's super old and it's such a huge game that they probably have. But um, you there are two spawn po- you you become a, you're a kid and you can become an adult. Spoiler alert. Oh, spoilers. And, uh, we haven't got to the story the, yet. Both of those characters have a specific spawning point in the world. And then the only way that you could spawn in different places is if you were inside of a dungeon whenever you stopped playing the game. And that would spawn you at the beginning of that dungeon every time. So if this happened twice, where if one of us is fighting the boss fight, I mean, me, I'm fighting the boss, and then you crash, you have to restart the whole dungeon. Like, not do all the puzzles, you have to run straight to the boss fight room again. Yeah, if I want to fight the boss. is very inconvenient. Because some of the dungeons have, like, a centralized hub, and we expand out from that, and then the boss fight is in that centralized hub. Or some of them are, like, a hallway. And so if he if he lags out at the end of the hallway, he has to go through the whole hallway again to get back to the boss fight. Usually it would mean Philip going, all right, Nave, it's up to you. I'm going to go to the next dungeon. And yeah. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll fight this boss. And if I die, I I also have to restart and run down the hallway. But um, Which, before we get deeper into kind of how we played it, uh, I wanted to hit on like kind of our past experiences with the game. So you played this when you were a young lad? Yeah, I was ha- I was having a lot of um painful nostalgia. I would I would call it pain. It was so strong that it hurt me <laughs> how much nostalgia I was having in some of the places I was in. Yeah, that's kind of like mostly why I wanted to play this because we'll get into it later how the co-op is kind of superficial. Like it definitely is just tacked on. But I wanted to play through this game again and I thought it'd be a better experience to play with another person because growing up you could play through with another person but then one person's just sitting there watching while the other person's playing with this we were both interacting with the world at the same time and experience in the setting that is ocarina of time on paper this game is save the princess save the world which you know boring old style writing but where it shines is in the set dressing because you have all the different locations you have the peter pan forest where the children never grow up and they're just kind of hanging out and having fun playing games when all this serious stuff is going on and you have the death mountain full of rock eating rock monsters that just want to hang out and dance and eat rocks if you could say anything about this game is that it absolutely oozes with charm even to this day if you sat a kid down right now to play this game, they would notice that it looks very bad compared to other things, but they would love, what is it, Kikori Forest or whatever that's it. that you spawn in. Like the music that's playing, the people that are standing around, they're so animated and lively. Even though there's nothing really going on, if you're paying attention, uh, it still is a world that you want to explore because there's a lot of love and care that went into the level design in this game. This game was actually really impactful for me growing up. Like you talked about like the nostalgia. But this game definitely shaped me as a, I don't know, I guess a person, as a human person. This game helped <laughs> make me who I am. Because you say those kinds of things, it makes me feel like you're not a human person. Yeah, I'm not like sure You're trying sometimes. to convince me. I'm trying to convince trying myself to convince half like, the time. I am human. Yeah. I'm human. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> like, I remember being like, I don't know, like eight or nine years old. And my dad gave me like just like an old junk computer that didn't have any internet capabilities or and couldn't really run any programs except for it could kind of do like Sonic 3 on the computer, but it was at pretty low frames for Sonic 3. But it had like, you know, Word on it. And I remember like, oh man, I'm totally going to write a book or something cool on here. And so I would just write fan fiction pretty much. But it wasn't even good fan fiction because I was just recapping Ocarina of Time as I was like writing it out. And I'm like, hell yeah, this is so cool. Oh, dude. What? Have you heard someone did that? Have you heard that story? What? Oh, my God. What am I thinking of? Oh, God, it's it's run. It's fucking fading away in my head. Someone. 
uh, in Sweden, maybe? Uh, it was a woman. She recapped the Ocarina of Time and sold it oh, as a novel yeah. series. I heard about that, too. Incredible. I don't, okay, it's not. It's yeah. I'm I'm so shocked and surprised. Really, it's nothing really important. But it's so funny that I don't. It's not funny. That's actually very sad. You She's told me a that a game developed in Japan that was released in English in America that was then ripped off by someone in Sweden and published as a book that probably sold a couple copy, copies in Swedish, most likely <laughs> to other Swedish people. Are you pulling this up now? Yeah, I'm pulling it up because I want to know if it's in. All right, then I'll press on. Um, another defining moment in my childhood, I remember, where I was like 15 or so. I was actually starting to have some money. I don't know if I was working yet. But I remember I spent like, I don't know, like 50 or $60 on my own like ocarina set online. I bought it, and it was like Zelda-themed and everything. But it was also a complete ripoff because it was just like trash plastic, and it sounded terrible. And I remember... Jana made fun of me so much for that, and she still makes fun of me. She's like, oh, you remember when you bought that trash-ass <laughs> ocarina? And I'm like, oh, why are you being so mean? <laughs> like, yes, it was really bad. She's like, oh, you could have bought an actual, like, clay one for, like, 25 bucks that looks so much better, made by an actual, like, ocarina maker and not molded plastic. And I'm like, well, I wish I would have known that now. <laughs> Look, I have one too. Here, look. That's what I, I just ran off on the camera. Is it crappy plastic? I have an ocarina. No, no, it's clay. Yeah, see, but, that um, looks so good. It's really good. Hold on, I'm going to play it. it. Oh, it's so dusty. I just breathed in dust. <laughs> oh my god, my asthma. I don't even know if I have asthma, but it doesn't feel good. Oh, look, but look. So when I got it, it came in broken. Oh, yeah, no. it, this whole part was broken, and that wouldn't matter, but there's a hole. there was a hole right here. Oh, no, you can't have any it, holes it, in the side. Yeah, it screwed it all up so it didn't play properly. And so now it, uh, I don't even know if it works. It looks like it might have fell off of the thing, but. <gasps> See? It works. It really, I mean, it's it's a pretty simple thing. Like, ocarinas are pretty simple. Yeah, but... it's just like spinning air. <clears throat> I made a uh, goofy YouTube video, like, back when PUBG was really popular. And <laughs> it's like a little short video of my, uh, we're driving a car and like a or like an atv and i hit a bump and we flipped over and my friend came to flip the truck over and it flipped over it barely touched me and it knocked me down <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then i play the i play the, i'm i'm playing the ocarina at the id playing in the arms of the angels really badly i was like i was like specifically like i want it to be bad so i learned how, i i got the, like a like a fucking chart yeah. how to play it I played it three times and went, okay, I'm going to do this now, record it. And it's going to be that run, like this one time run. and I'm done. And it was really bad. And at the end, I <laughs> I think somebody's with me. I don't remember who, but I'm just <laughs> laughing. And I'm like, that's good enough. That's going to have to work. <laughs> you're like, it's stupid. really the take you're going to go? <laughs> the, third, the fourth yeah. take? <laughs> it was so wobbly. Like I was unsure with the notes and shit. <laughs> I cannot find anything about this chick, dude. We might have had a fever dream about this girl. I don't know. It sounds like something that happened. It sounds like a thing what that exists in the on? world. Uh, we were oh, just... you're still, we're still talking about nostalgia. Yeah, just like kind of old stuff like that. I think those are the only Ocarina of Time related stories. And both of them feel really embarrassing. But I'm here now, so it's okay. I don't think, I don't know how much I've talked about my dad in these podcasts yet. But um, I assume you have one. Ocarina of Time is just completely inseparable from my dad because when the first time i beat the game really i watched him play most of it and then i play i was like he was like here you play make your own account and play and so i was playing and he would just keep helping me along the way because i just i could not figure out some most of the puzzles i was just a child i yeah. was really small i mean we can figure and, out some of the puzzles this time around yeah the like there were parts that i would get scared like as soon as you become an adult you see the zombies everywhere i was like i could not get past that part i was Same. like dad you have to get me out of the city because i can't get out and you literally just run out so yeah, they don't chase you or anything you just walk past yeah, the zombies I just stand around being sad and stuff sometimes i listen to old game soundtracks primarily i'll listen to like three major ones and one's like final fantasy 7 soundtrack which is amazing Nerd. Um, i'll listen to uh super mario sunshine 
Mm -hmm. That's a good. Or one. Super Mario 64. I usually listen to Sunshine, but 64 sometimes. And then I listen to Ocarina of Time, just constantly. Like, I I listen to those soundtracks at le all at least once a month, all three of them, at some point. Getting to the points in the game where the soundtrack pops up, like these specific songs that I enjoy, it kills me. Like when we beat the game and I was w listening to the music, uh, the end credits music, I've listened to that song countless times. And now that I'm listening to it again after beating the game after a decade, maybe, and thinking about the first time when I was a kid and I got to these fucking credits, like I was like, oh, I'm here. I did it. The the joy, you know, like I just yeah. felt crushing nostalgia. Like I was like, oh god, just watching the because at the end they do a beautiful thing with the credits that there you get to go. It shows you little glimpses of all the places you've been and all the people you've been with, you've you've adventured with, and this really inspiring, uplifting music is playing. It's very heartbreaking <laughs> if this is something you played as a child yeah well, well let's just ask what's your favorite sound bite or you know song the song yeah what's your favorite song um gerudo valley oh, is the generic so answer yeah i love the gerudo valley song but um really my favorite song is the end credit song but i just gushed about it so i'll talk about the gerudo valley song and most people have heard that song even if you haven't played the game yeah. because it's such a popular kind of lick you know it's like on a guitar like an acoustic guitar or i mean it's i think it's an emulated acoustic guitar because i think they had to use like midi or something to probably make yeah. the music on these which speaking of that i'll let you answer this is short <laughs> i promise okay uh the there's a song at lawn lawn ranch where the girl i forget her name that gives you a pona well she doesn't give you a pona does she uh the girl that's there I don't remember uh, her name. I don't remember her name either. But um, she's singing in that. And as a kid, I vividly remember her singing. And whenever I was much older and I started listening to these game soundtracks, I was listening to it and I was like, that is not a voice. That is something else. Like, it's, <laughs> it is it a is synthesized a voice. thing. Yeah, it's, it's something strange. And now when I listen to it, all I can think about is my shock. Because it, it completely overwrote the nostalgia. It was the shock of me realizing that that wasn't a voice. And now all I can hear is this fucking mutant sound <laughs> that's yeah. coming at me. This synthesizing wail. Uh, so what was your favorite song? Uh, Fire Temple. Now, Fire Temple is terrible. Uh, that was the one that they had to redo or like they had to edit in the newer version of the game because it had some religious hymn that they just took from stock music and they just put it in the background. And it was in like maybe Hebrew or something. But if, I don't know if I really had to pick one, maybe like the Song of Storms in the windmill. I love that stuff. Oh, yeah. And another one that you actually learn is, uh, is it the Nocturne of Shadows? Yeah, that one's the, a good one. Is that the, a lot of the ones that teleport you are really, really good. Really good, yeah. And it's, inter it's not interesting. It's impressive because all of those songs that you had to learn, there was only like five notes, right? Yeah. So they had to be a combination of these five notes. It's one, two, three, four, and then A. Like left down, right up, and A to play the ocarina. Each song had to fit in the purview of six to eight notes with only those five notes in there. That's some musical genius shit to make every single song sound good. Like I don't think there's a single song that sounds dumb. Especially because when you play it in the game, you play it for a sec you play it for one bar and then the song the song it plays again for one bar and then an orchestra comes in after you and plays with you yeah or like something like more instruments come and they fill in the dead air makes you feel pretty awesome as a kid oh yeah it feels good all right so let's move on to uh well do you have any more memories you want to touch on real quick dude we can have like an hour-long podcast just on me talking about all right well i'm sure we can get into it as we go along then yeah let's lace it in <laughs> okay yeah let's stretch out so game mechanics, basic hack and slash kind of sword adventure. You kind of level up just by gathering tools as you go through the game. It's like in the very beginning of the game, you can't progress till you get the sword. Then you need to get a shield. Then you get a slingshot. Definitely establishes the pattern very early. Like mm -hmm. it's the first thing you have to do is get the tool required to progress to the next area. Yep. 
the game is uh I don't I wouldn't I wouldn't say like a Metroidvania kind of style, but that is how Metroidvanias are generally described. The gathering of the tools is your primary objective for each area of the game. Like you're going for whatever the whatever tool this area is offering you, and then the rest of the objective is to get out of that area using the tool you got, usually resulting in like a boss fight at the end that requires you to show your mastery of the tool. Mm-hmm. That is something that echoed throughout the rest of history of games. The whole Metroidvania genre is just like that. I mean, Ocarina of Time didn't invent it, but it definitely did a good job uh, showcasing it in a 3D environment, basically for the first time. Yeah, each tool feels pretty different. <clears throat> Besides the adult child variants, too. And some of the tools, they don't even seem like a weapon you would expect. One of the more iconic ones is like the hook shot, which is where they literally give Link a grappling hook. Like he fires out of his wrist, or not his wrist, but off a like little hand mount that pierces into a wall. And he can either pull things to him or he'll leap to whatever he hit. And that's one of the ones that you have to use the most. Most of the things, like if you think about the Graviton hammer, you use it in that one temple, and then I think you use it two more times ever again, yeah. <laughs> if just to hit buttons, and it's it's the exact same button from the temple that because like Graviton Hammer, you just swing it down on a button that's rusted and it makes it go down. Most buttons, when you step on them, your weight is enough to push them down. But yeah, the hammer's pretty bad. The uh, what was I thinking? Oh, I was going to bring up the boots, the iron boots. Oh God, the boots are the worst. The iron boots are showcased in the water temple. That's also where you get the long shot, right? Well, you get the boots from the ice cave that you then take to the water temple. Yeah, a couple of the temples have like a preliminary area mm-hmm. and before you go to the the big bad dungeon. I think we forgot to mention this, but this, this game was remade for the 3DS. Oh, yeah. And it came with a bunch of quality of life improvements. Like it wasn't just an HD up like remake. It wasn't just like an HD remaster. It was actually partially remade. Like the Link model, a lot of the character models are updated. They look they look a little bit more modern, but they also changed some things around. And one of the things that they changed was they made the Iron Boots an equipable item mm-hmm. where you have your C buttons left, down, and right. So you can equip, you can hotkey three different items. The boots, however, are not an item they are a piece of equipment like a gear or clothing i guess yeah it's more like your outfit that you can change because you have multiple boots multiple tunics that you wear and multiple swords unfortunately the water temple is showcasing the iron boots ability to bring you to the bottom of the water that you're in Mm -hmm. and the whole time you're in the water temple you're changing the level of the water so it's like up high or down in the middle of the temple or basically drained and in order to change the levels you have to go to each level and play a song in front of it to change the water level it's very slow and arduous oh yeah and the fact that every single time you have to press start go over to your uh gear equip the iron boots press b no i don't want to (laughs) say press b again and then the game goes okay fine and then the plot screen goes away and now you're slowly sinking to the bottom yeah it's so bad that's a part where that's a that's a infamous place. We probably didn't even need to talk about it too much because it's so like people are probably just asleep at this point because they know that yeah. this is the, the water temple. temple that sucks. So bad. Like everyone talks about like, oh, you know, I love playing my favorite old games. And then you forget about the bad part of the old games. Everybody has rose tinted glasses whenever they look back at their favorite games. But then they get to this part and they're like, oh, yeah, I forgot about this part. It's like, man, me and my little brother love playing Battletoads. And then you play it now, and you're like, how the fuck did anyone play this game? Yeah. This game is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> and I keep hitting my teammate? It's awful. Yeah, fucking how do you get past the speeder bike part? You just crash all the time. What the hell? Uh, one mechanic I really wanted to hit on is the ocarina itself. I know we brushed it earlier. But yeah, you have five notes. And you pretty much have your own MIDI ocarina with this item you use in the game. And you use it to solve different riddles or not riddles. Basically, it's just like, play this song in this place, and you can progress. But you have, you know, your five different buttons to play all these different songs. I'm terrible at memorizing the songs. <laughs> For one, we're playing on Xbox controllers, so my buttons were 
X, Y, right bumper, and the back button, and A were my five different musical notes. And then you were like, oh, just press up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, and then A, and, uh, and it'll teleport you. And I'm like, oh, brr, 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 wrong, wrong note. <laughs> and like, you can just keep playing until you get it right, but I would just sit there and just press the wrong buttons for the longest time until I finally Dude, figured it out. The thing I was yelling at you about, like, maybe twice, is, like, I was like, why don't you just rebind the fucking C buttons? And I think you were just not doing it out of print, out of stubbornness at that point. No, well, that because was... Because just... my ocarina, my C buttons were C left was left on the D-pad, and then down on the D-pad, right on the D-pad, up on the D-pad. So I just knew what the buttons were no, always... No, no, no. You don't understand, Dave, because... <laughs> The C buttons are also how you use your tools. And I'm not going like, to press the D-pad to fire the bow. Are you crazy? That's what I did. It was fine. Oh, you no, know, I wanted it on Y. I wanted it on X. And I wanted it on right bumper. <laughs> and you can't put a tool on the back button or on uh, up on the C. Yeah, up on the C only is for like Navi or whatever yeah. when Navi talks to you. Um, That's a cool thing to hit on for the 3DS remake is that you only have two, like one button for the equipment item, and then the other buttons are the touchpad. Yeah. So you, so you just hit the touchpad. I, so I think you might have one extra slot, but I don't remember exactly. It was a pretty good remake, and especially because it's an older game, so the game doesn't really hold your hand about anything. So one thing they added to the 3DS remake was at the beginning spawn for the the kid, so the the treehouse, and then the adult spawn, the Temple of Time. They had a dude there that you could talk to, and he would give you hints. He'd be like, have you done this? The game knows what you've done. Yeah. So the game is like, maybe you should go to Death Mountain right now. And it, there's like recaps, too. It's like, this is what you just got done doing. So it's a game you could pick up and then leave alone for a while and pick it back up and play again. So that's a pretty accessible way to play the game, because I think 3DSs are super cheap right now anyways. That game's probably expensive because it's got the Nintendo tax. Oh, and those yeah. games never really get cheaper, but... Yeah, I wouldn't I would play that. the old version for your first playthrough. If you have a way to play the 3DS version, play that. And the graphics are so much better. The game is so much more better designed. Like just in the Water Temple, there is a line on the ground that goes on the walls that will literally guide you to each point you need to raise and lower the water. And the other one... I didn't even know they did that. Yeah, like if you look, there's like a yellow line that will trace all the way up to the highest point and there's like a blue and a green line i think and they are like neon like glow. yes like it shows you where you need to go like if you ever get like confused whereas in the other one you just have a blurry jpeg stretched over nine feet of wall inside the game you know <laughs> yeah you just have to uh just stumble around it which is what we yeah. ended up doing we just kind of memorized where everything was it was painful though yeah there was a lot of fucking times where we were playing this game and just feeling agony we we were definitely pushing ourselves sometimes. Yeah, we're like, we just got to get this done. What are we talking about? Uh, right we were just now, kind like, of specifically? lightly. Gl- well, not we were actually diving in. This was a, the dive in portion for the game mechanics, where we kind of like hit on okay. well, parts like that. So since we're in the game mechanics, we might as well talk about the m- cheating. We oh did. yeah, because I think that technically turned into a yeah, mechanic. You can leave this the one. middle of the game. There are cheats on this mod engine that you can get. Like you can give yourself infinite arrows and infinite health and stuff like that at first we weren't using them but unfortunately since we were using an emulator there are bugs and one of the bugs we encountered was whenever we became an adult we immediately went to go get magic and all of the fairies they would give us the power but they wouldn't give us a magic meter so we couldn't use the power so we had to cheat to give ourselves the magic bar and so every time we started the game, we would start the game without a magic bar, and we would have to turn the cheat on to give us magic. After a while, this happened in the water temple that we're bitching about so much. We got fed up. <laughs> like we couldn't. Yeah, we, we were, were so tired. We were playing it for like an hour, and we were just running in circles, getting confused where we were. And there are parts that we just couldn't do for some reason. Like there was this part with the plat, the platforms falling, and you have to grapple hook up them, and eventually we learned that there's a levitate button and once we had got this levitate button it completely changed the game because if you just hold down whatever you key bound to l which is not used at all in uh, you mean the Zelda. map button that it opens the, and closes the map <laughs> it is the button that opens and closes the map so i guess it is used but um 
but you never want to turn off the map. Why would you ever want to turn off the map? So maybe they, but it they does want turn like a HUDless playthrough, even though the rest of your HUD the is rest still of there. The HUD. Yeah, you hold down the left trigger, whatever you've assigned to that, and you will just start floating into the air with whatever momentum you had before. Like if you're running forward and you hold L, you start floating forward, and as long you'll just keep floating as long as you're holding the button. This completely reinvigorated my will to play this game because now Philip is just doing a, a lot of the heavy lifting and I am just fucking floating around every single room looking for ways to break out of the map or just screwing with stuff <laughs> like seeing different things from different angles. And this is one thing that we talked about if we should continue to use the levitate or not. And I was saying that it completely reinvigorated my childlike instinct to explore this world like i was feeling like i was a kid again i remembered the moment we got out of the water temple i beelined straight for the the village underneath the mountain and just started no, flying Kakariko. around yeah kakariko village i just started yep. flying around on all the places that i always wanted to run around in and you'd be surprised how often there are solid ground areas in these places way off the map I mean, mostly whenever you fly off, everything gets cold out and you're and you're just in a void. But sometimes you'll land out on the other side of a fence and you can run around for a while before you fell through the ground again. I could just feel my child, my inner child coming out in me in my hands, like just pl- my kid self was playing the game at this moment, just trying mm-hmm. to explore this little area that I always wanted to see. When you're outside of the Temple of Time, you get a fixed camera, so you're not really allowed to look around. But there's like this area off to the side of the temple that you can't go through. There's a little fence there. You can float over that fence and then land on the other side. And then you can run around in that tiny little area. But it's like the side of the temple has a wall that you run against. Like you don't just fall through. Usually when you get in these areas, the textures that are there, but there's no physical boundary. So your character will usually just walk through whatever is there. But there's collision there on the side of the temple and i'm like it feels like we were supposed to be here somehow like 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 they just threw this fence up for some reason because i guess something broke when you walked out that way and they were like okay well let's leave this here because it's beautiful let's put a fence there and make an invisible wall like there is this one part when we first started levitating we levitated out i levitated out of the map somehow and i dropped down and landed on solid ground and now all of a sudden like it was solid ground but it wasn't only solid ground it wasn't just a flat plane there were like things you could climb up and places to slide down like we were on geometry that we just couldn't see and i'm like what yeah. is this what could this have been like this what if this was just an extra area like an extra room that got cut from the game now unfortunately we never found anything like that again that was the only one i can't even remember what temple it was in it was it in the was water temple the water behind temple. the one of the waterfalls because we were just like flying into everything at that point, seeing yeah. what we could do. Yeah, we did get stuck in there, and so we had to we had to cheese our way out of there. But um, I think we just used the magic. Like we had to give ourselves. There's a magic that lets you set a warp point and lets you teleport to that warp point. I think we had to yeah. give cheat and give ourselves that magic so that we could teleport out. Because the alternative is we go we restart the ROM. And we go back to the beginning of the damn water temple. And we were oh, just no. trying to beat the water temple. We really wanted yeah. to get out. Like, you were mad at me. You are like, Nave, you did this to us. Yeah, Why? we're trapped. We're going to die. <laughs> we d- genuinely got trapped because when we went through, the, it, we went through, we clipped through a specific point in the map. But then it just locked itself on the other side. Like, we went through a, a trap door. And also, we could see everything in the in that room that was spawned but we couldn't get through this invisible wall to get back to where we were supposed to be there's a blanket on the floor back there that's a dog yeah well it's my dog underneath the blanket there was a okay. blanket i think my friend fell asleep there and i think i gave him a blanket or something i don't know why the blanket's in here but she is just rolling around in that blanket she oh, knocked it off so of the sweet. couch. Anyway, I just kept wondering what the hell that was in my camera. Yeah, but uh, the levitating, levitating definitely helped us get over the jankiness of that we were experiencing with the crashes. But the other thing we used quite a bit was a fast forward because this game is slow Yeah, a I lot was, of the time. I basically 
kept my hand on the keyboard, just ready to fast forward at any point. Yeah, because we could pump it up to about three three times speed. And you think like, oh, do we really need three times speed? This is like an old game. Yeah, you get tired of walking so fast in this because we're always backtracking. There were so many points where we're like, Nay, get just get the teleport. That way I don't have to walk for four minutes just to get over to you. Because yeah, so what he would do is like one of us, almost every single dungeon, one of us gave up. Yeah. <laughs> and so we're like, okay, you do that. I'm gonna go to the I'm gonna go to the Kakariko forest and get the next uh Ocarina song so I you can just teleport to me. And so we would go on that recon mission to to go get the the fetch. Like to get the fast basically. travel point for the other person. Because like we were playing co op, but all of our instance like enemies were specific to each player. And so only in a few occasions could we actually interact with each other's enemies. So we would walk into a room and there'd be like a wolf monster. And both of us would have to fight the wolf monster. But if a door would unlock when we defeated the wolf monster, only one of us needed to beat it and the door would unlock. Like there were so many times where I feel like you would just kill the enemy and I'd still be fighting him and the door would open. And I'm like, I'm out of here. And yeah. I would just like run away. <laughs> like, I don't want to fight this guy anymore. That so you said, uh, what you said about the uh, specific instances of enemies that completely just reminded me of how wonky the game interacts with our collision against the other person's enemies. Like, yeah. At the beginning, I didn't know what was happening. Occasionally, the enemies can hit... Your enemies would hit me. And I was like... I thought my game was just out of sync or something. Like, I was fighting the piranha plant things in the tree. The Deku plants or whatever. And I was getting... It was winding up to hit me. And I'd get hit, like, immediately. And then it would lunge at me. And I'm like, why am I getting hit? Like, what the hell's happening? This emulation sucks. But, um... We soon realized, like... Once we got like the bow and arrow, that sometimes I would be shooting at a bat and I would shoot, hit my bat, but my arrow would go through a bat in your game and then yeah. kill your bat. And so there's because some the really... arrows would be in like both of our games, but the enemies wouldn't. So it's like there are it's like we are in parallel universes at the same time that have merged, but um. It's it reminds me of a game called The Medium, which is a game I could have put The Medium on my games I've been playing, I guess, because I played it a little bit. But um, The Medium's a Xbox Series exclusive, and um, I'm pretty sure it's going to the PlayStation soon. But um, it's a game that renders two worlds at the same time, and your character it's exactly like this actually, because your character inhabits both of the worlds at the same time. So. Like, say you're standing in your living room. Uh, the screen is cut in half like it's split screen, but and your character is standing in your living room on the left side, and on the right side, it's like a Silent Hill version of your living room. Or it may not even be your living yeah. room at all, but it's a similarly structured uh, area. So <clears throat> when you're walking, there could be a, a ghost, because your character's a medium. She can see ghosts. So your character would go and talk to a ghost, and you would go through the dialogue, and it, you would see both screens, and she's sitting there talking to him. Like, she'll touch him on the shoulder, and in reality, she's just holding her hand out, and, like, she's holding someone's shoulder, but there's no one there, and she's just sitting there talking. It's exactly like that in this game, where you're interacting with something that I don't see, but I can also interact with it if yeah. I use specific ways. Like... Do you want to talk about the uh, what is it? Dark Link is that it? Oh, is? Tell yeah. About the Dark, Dark Link, Link was so bugged. So Dark Link is supposed to be a hard fight where you're fighting a mirror version of yourself because you walk out on like a giant mirror lake in the Water Temple. It's one of the more set piece moments. It's like there's a, it's just a, like water kind of all across the floor with a dead tree in the center. You walk past them and you're like, there's the door, but the door's locked. And you turn around and you see. Well, it almost looks like a reflection or a dark shadow in like standing by the tree. And like Zelda borrows a lot of inspiration from Peter Pan. And so a lot of the Peter Pan stories are like, OK, we have lost kids in the woods, lost woods where they never grow up. Kakariko Forest, kids never grow up, whatever. And then you have Peter Pan losing a shadow. 
And this is where Link loses his shadow and has to fight it. And it has all the same moves as you can do. It even has like special moves where if you try to stab it, he'll jump into the air and stand on top of your sword for a second before doing a backflip off of it. And you're like, dang, this is this is so cool. But ours was bugged where he would dodge every hit we tried to do. I don't know if it was just putting in an account for both of us being in the room at the same time, but we ended up having to cheese it where we would cast the fireball spell, which would just shoot out a big shockwave of fire. And we were both just doing it repeatedly while holding the fast forward button. So we were continuously <laughs> launching fireballs and Nave's fireballs were hitting my link and or not my link, but my dark link. And I was hitting his for him. And it was the only way we could do damage to him. But they got to a point where like both of our links just did like a backflip and disappeared. And we were just walking around hovering too, you know, because we were yeah. also levitating. And we're like, where'd they go? We can't find them. And at first we thought it was like a set piece, like he's disappeared and is doing something, but he was gone for, he was gone forever for you. Like you never, yeah, he never came link. back, but my link disappeared for like three or four minutes to the, we were really considering just resetting the ROM and we were like, Oh God, we don't want to reset the ROM because we're still in the water temple and we would restart at the spawn. But, um, <laughs> Eventually, my link just showed up and stabbed me, and I was like, "Oh my god, he's here!" He just appeared somewhere and ran at me and hit me. And so, I was I, all I would do was just stand there, stand standing still, and you would use your fireball, and he wouldn't dodge out of the way because I it wasn't me doing it. And so, yeah. uh, he would get hit by your. He would just keep running straight at me, trying to hit me, and you would hit him with his. And since you were fast forwarding, the thing is, is that each time you do something like that, it's so it's specific to your instance so if you're fast forwarding and i'm in normal time i will still be in normal time but i will see you fast forwarding like if yeah. if you're fast forward and running around you'll sprint at hyper speed and i'll just be walking normally and a funny thing also is that if you pause the game in this it's a single player game so it pauses the game yeah. so your game gets paused your enemies stop fighting and doing anything i'm still playing the game so i just see whatever you were doing like if you were jumping and then you paused you would just stop in midair and freeze like you're playing red light green light <laughs> you just you freeze right where you were and uh well i remember once we discovered that like i found a moment where i was like was it at the well or something where there was like a big square hole in the ground and i'm like hey nave check this out and i'm like i'm gonna jump in the air and then pause so i freeze frame just floating in the air above this hole but instead i accidentally did a roll and so then i rolled and fell straight into the <laughs> hole <laughs> Or, no, I paused like, right before the hole, and then it just showed me, like, laying on the ground. <laughs> and then I unpaused and fell in the hole anyways. It would happen, too, when you were when you would freeze and uh, have to restart. Your character would be mid-swing. Or, well, also, your character you modded in was uh, a Halo Spartan. And oh, yeah, we didn't the... talk about that part yet. Did we not? I think I talked... I think I brought up one. Okay, well, we can go ahead. We'll hit it. Well, yeah, you were you modded in your character is it was a it was a Halo Spartan, and some of the mods are just it's just a skin swap. Like I was playing as Dompe the Grave Digger. He's like a really goofy, dumb looking character, and yeah. so I, he's like a big o underbite and stuff. And he, <laughs> so it was it was a simple mod. So all my all the equipment, and everything was normal. It's just my character palette was swapped. Uh, your character though. They put a lot of detail into it. So your character's uh, bow and arrow was a ne was a rocket launcher, and yep. your character's grappling hook was a needler and stuff like that. So I would see you like aiming a rocket launcher, and then you just freeze, <laughs> and yeah. then you're like, I think I froze, and I turn back around, and you're still there like a statue, just holding the rocket launcher, and I'm like, oh yeah, you're you're gone. Very sad. Uh, before we start moving to like kind of our final co-op review uh do you want to just kind of like name a story beat that either has nostalgia like significance or just something you really enjoyed so we don't have to cover the whole story the entire childhood part up until the water the jabu jabu's belly the water part mm -hmm. um has crazy nostalgia for me it's like a black hole of nostalgia uh because when i was a kid I would just play that game up until that point to get to Jabu Jabu's belly. And I would go, okay, fuck that place. I'm just going to restart the game and play it again and just keep reliving like Groundhog Day, keep reliving the beginning part. So specifically all of those songs and all of those moments in that game, 
uh, in that small section of it is something I think about a lot. And uh, a lot of the music besides Gerudo Valley and uh, the theme song at the end, the credits music, I listen to a lot on YouTube or whatever. And like I would have one save that was basically done with the game. And I would just ride Epona to Gerudo Valley to listen to the music. This is back way back yeah. before the internet and stuff. And then I would ride back to the to the Ganon's castle, and then just I was done with it. I just had to go up there and fight him. And then I would fight him and listen to the end music. And I would be like, ah, oh, that was good. Okay, now I'm gonna replay the beginning again. I just and just do that because that was all I had to do. Yeah, that's nice, man. Got uh, a lot of the same feelings. I like that I still don't give a shit about the same sections of the game. <laughs> like I'm an adult <laughs> and I still fucking don't like these parts. I'm like nothing is. Yeah, changed. like I think I almost beat through all of uh, Jabu's like palace with you just like right behind me or not Jabu, like Jabu Jabu's belly because I was just like, all right, maybe let's just get through this. And you're like, I don't want to be here. Yeah, <laughs> I really did nothing. I did nothing that yeah. whole fucking that whole time. I think I had a problem with something too. I think something was bugged out for me. Like, I couldn't get into a door. That was something that would happen a lot for us, was where, like, I would use a key on a door and then unlock it and go through it, but it wouldn't unlock on your screen sometimes. Yeah, it, like, and you just close the door behind you, of course. Like <laughs> I would just run face first into a locked door. Yeah, I think that happened, like, 10% of the locked doors, where it would just not unlock the door. And sometimes leaving the room and coming back would fix it. But you know what I also did? Respawned all the enemies and shit that was in the room. So. <laughs> yeah. I think I had a problem with a door that I couldn't open, no matter what I did. And I didn't want to re re redo the ROM, so I just kind of followed you around until I couldn't. And Jabu Jabu's Belly is one of those dungeons that loops around, like, mm -hmm. it's not a straight line. So eventually you came back with the princess, in that place you have to carry the princess and set her down on buttons. <laughs> like she's, <laughs> yeah, so you get like she's an object. <laughs> but um, she, you set her down on the buttons, and one time you set her down on a button and then walked out of the room, and she just spawned on my screen. I was like, oh, there she is. And not on the button, also. She was just there. Like, in the sp like if you jump into water, she'll drown, and then she'll respawn in generic places. So I think that was where she respawned. Because I picked her up once, and I tried to complete the rest of the level, and I fell in the water, and she drowned. And I was like, oh, <laughs> Philip, you've got to do this. I can't do this anymore, man. Yeah. I, had, I had no patience for it. I was, like, reliving my childhood of hating this fucking thing. I was like, ugh. Oh. Well, before we get out of the story beats... Uh... One story beat that I always loved and, you know, I'm always super excited for was with uh, Darunian, the Goron. He's like the big chief of all the Rock Eater people on Death Mountain. You go and you talk to him and you're like, hey, bud, I need the spirit stone from your village so that I can, you know, get the power of the gods to save the princess or whatever. And he's <laughs> like, you know, I would, but I'm just not feeling it, man. Our favorite rock cave where we get the best rocks to eat there's a monster in there and there and i had to block it with a big rock i'm not feeling so good and he just won't talk to you He's and you're like out. yeah and so you go back to the forest where you came from like your home and you go to your childhood best friend saraya or sarah i don't know how you pronounce it i think it's sarah. and she teaches you uh the song right saraya's Sarah's song or no yeah. is sarah is it sarah's song the song it's in the lost woods i think it is called sarah's song yeah, but she's like, hey, this song is a reminder of all the childhood times we had together. Play it whenever you need to remember happier times. And I'm like, I'm going to cry. <laughs> and she's like, I'll, like, I'll always be your friend and I'll always be here because they're immortal children. And then you go back and you play that song for Darunian. And he literally says the line, my favorite quote, and my depression is gone. <laughs> and then he starts dancing like to the song and he's like this song reminds me of happier times and i'm like that's beautiful i'm gonna cry and he's like you know you you really helped me out here you're now a brother of mine and he gives you a magic bracelet that makes you as strong as a man as a child where you can lift heavy iron bombs to throw that reminds me of the end of ocarina of time the very last cutscene. Which this situation happened, the situation I was talking about earlier where you would crash in the middle of a boss fight and not want to yeah. go on. That happened to you at the <laughs> end of the boss fight. fighting um, Ganon in his final form. I was like, yeah. I'm not going to make it, Dave. He was I fighting crashed. Ganon in his final form. 
and then he crashed. And then whenever he reloaded, he was fighting Ganon in his human form, or his Gerudo form, whatever it's called. So I don't know if you know this, but it's a very long fight, fighting him in the Gerudo form. Then you have to es- you have three minutes to escape with the princess out of the tower, and then you get to fight Ganon in his beast form again. So I basically <laughs> so- lost like ten minutes of gameplay. <laughs> Yeah, oh, even if you're fast forwarding, it's it's still a ton of time. There's no real way to fast forward it because it, there's timing specific things you have to do. So when I beat the, it's not even just the music. Whenever I beat the end, I was watching uh, the cutscene at the end after the me- credits roll, and Link is a kid again because you know, oh that's a good beat to hit on too. The the end Zelda is like. When you okay, so when you're an adult, you killed Ganon. Zelda is like, hey, you you saved Hyrule, but I need to send you back to where you came from because you're not supposed to be an adult or something like that. I don't know. I, I didn't wasn't really reading it. I was really just listening to the music and stuff. But she's basically like, hey, give me your ocarina. You have to put the Master Sword back in the Temple of Time so that we can seal it and just go back to living your life the way that you used to. And so she she's like, goodbye. And I'm like reading this. And I'm just like, this is so sad because they're you're like assuming that you're assuming like Mario and Princess Peach like they're together now, right? But yeah, then it's all she's out. like, "You've done so much for me, but I have to send you away." And then she sends you off, and then at the end of the credits and everything, your character walks back into Princess Zelda's garden where she's standing there looking through the window, looking for Ganon, uh, yeah. Ganondorf, and you walk up to her and she turns around surprised, just like she did whenever you first walked in there and it just goes the legend of zelda the end and it's just a freeze frame there and i'm just like oh god <laughs> my child a lot of emotions it's a simple story but with a lot of setting yeah a lot of heart a lot of yeah. charm uh so just as far as like the cooperative kind of rundown goes a lot of this really was kind of just like emotional support slash relief because we were basically playing two single player campaigns at the same time but helping each other out as we went. There's multiple bosses where one of us would disconnect or crash or die or whatever and be like, don't worry, I'll beat him. And like, thank God, because I really don't want to play through. This was almost a master playthrough because imagine getting all the experience of playing through the game, all the emotion, emotional like relief of seeing the game be completed, but never having to worry about a game over. Yeah, we died. I think I died like twice or something. But each time I knew like, okay, it's not a big deal. I've beaten the game so many times before as a kid. I know Nave can probably beat the rest of this boss. Yeah. So there was like um, a no stress environment. What it really reminds me of is the re releases of Final Fantasy seven, VII, eight, and nine on current gen hardware. I mean it got I mean current gen is the PS five and Series X, but on Xbox One and PS four they re released Final Fantasy seven, VII, eight, and nine and they used the PC ports of those and the PC ports they had cheats built in, just like this mod does. On Final Fantasy VII specifically, it has, because that's the one I remember the most, it has triple speed, just like we did. It has fast-forward setting. And then it has never encounter battles. It has make your characters invincible and ultra-powerful so that they're always at limit break and they're always doing 9999 damage. A lot of people that are playing this game for the first time, it doesn't tell you how to activate those. Like, you literally just click in the left stick for one, click in the right stick for another and then click in both sticks for another the game doesn't tell you that you have to accidentally press one of those buttons and go oh shit i'm super fast now people who have played that game like eight times like i've played seven like a fucking ton of times being able to experience the story beats in like a rapid fire manner i don't have to grind i don't have to do anything i can literally just blitz through the game it was such a refreshing experience and i got to do all of the stuff that i never really knew how to do like i got to do all the side quest stuff in ocarina of time we did like none of the side stuff we were like, we're not doing the side quest stuff. We didn't have enough time. We we were we were running short with the water with the water temple stuff and everything. We, we spent a whole day the, in the water temple. Yeah, I think we beat in one day we beat all of kid stuff, and one day we did the water temple, and one day we did all of the rest of the temples, and then yeah. the last day it was just Ganon's tower, which we didn't spend a whole day in Ganon's tower. It didn't take that long. Final Fantasy, the Final Fantasy games, they have the similar mods. They have the speed up stuff, and those older games, they don't really respect your time too good. And oh, so, no. <laughs> it's it's pretty fucking amazing. Like I was playing with the fast forward stuff, and I was like, I wish more games had this this fast forward setting where I can just fucking I could run super fast down a hallway I've been through a million times. 
In fact, if Mass Effect Andromeda had an update where I could fast forward, I would fucking beat that game. I know I would because I knew I know at that point I could just throw on a podcast and beat it in two days. Yeah, definitely. We talked like, about Mass Effect drama and drama in this podcast, right? That wasn't yes, before that was, the podcast. That was, that was this episode. We talked about okay. it. So. Well, I mean, like, I was like, did we talk about this before we started recording? Or did I just bring up, did I bring up something that... <laughs> I know, we've been going so through. long. Uh, yeah. But I do want to hit on kind of just, like, the emergent, like, funny moments that would happen. Because, like, without the added stress of the game, we were just messing around so much time. Like, and we each had different skins. And it was so funny because, like, I, you know, had my skin already. I'm like, Nave, you need to download a skin and install it. I had done, like, pre-game testing to make sure we would be able to play. And I had already picked out my skins, which my adult was Master Chief. And my child skin was one of the lizard enemies, except he was scaled down to be child size. So he's just <laughs> this ugly little lizard that I was playing as. My and your skins. Is... Yeah, go, ahead. go for it. Yeah, okay. So you had a couple. First, you started as CJ from San Andreas. <laughs> which is just a dude <laughs> in, <laughs> in like a wife in beater. a wife beater yeah yeah and then you went to a goron which is a giant rockety monster but it was as a child you were a goron so your character model was twice the size of my lizard and we were going on adventures together it made the game extra hard because if I would do any platforming, my character model was way bigger than my actual hitbox. So, like, if I was walking on a small area, I would constantly just be falling off into into the abyss because I would think that I'm in the middle, but I'm actually on the right a little bit. Or, like, if I jump onto ledges, my character would jump and not move at all. He would just reach his hands up. His hands would be, like, ten feet above the ledge. He'd pull himself <laughs> up. And then... It was so stupid looking. And then you went to Dompe as your adult skin, which he had a fully animated jaw. Whereas like Master Chief, he had normal body animations, but of course he had no facial animation. Dampy was moving his eyes. He was <laughs> opening and closing his jaw when he was surprised because Link has jaw animations or like chin flaps. Yeah, where he's he like, like, yeah, he like yeah. smiles whenever. Yeah. The, the most important <laughs> thing is when you open up a chest, he holds an item up over his head, like, da na na na, and he's got like a smile on his face. When Dompe would do it, his mouth would be would <laughs> extend like a fucking snake. He would look like a, a, a boa constrictor. His, his mouth would open twice the size of his head. <laughs> it's. Yeah. And that just made like the playthrough even more enjoyable because, like, you know, we've, we've played this game so many times as kids, and seeing this completely slapstick version where we're playing as like lizards and gorons and dompe and master chief running around with an energy sword like it was just like it's like if you just took it like your toy box and just dumped all the toys out together you know like oh i'm playing gi joe with my pokemon it's like, like smash that's what it brothers. felt like yeah it was, it was smash, smash bros brothers? pretty much like master chiefs and smash bros look out you know which i for sure when i got to the end i did switch off the skin like I turned it off. I was like, I can't. You didn't take want to see seriously. him in the cutscene. Yeah, I had Dolphin <laughs> was talking to to Zelda, and I was like, I need to turn this off. Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting so sad, bad. and I can't be sad looking at this. All right, which Nate. I mean, if you you have to just Google what Dompe looks like. So Ocarina of Time Dompe or the graveyard, if you can't the the gravekeeper or whatever, if yeah. you can't spell Dompe, I think it's just how it sounds. It might not Damp even be Dompe. E, we might we might I be think. calling him the wrong name. But I had multiple skins. Those were the ones I stuck with was the Goron and Dompe. But I had, like, the Pepsi Man. I don't... Oh, this really yeah, we did old, Pepsi Man for a little bit. Pepsi Man's, like, a really old mascot for Pepsi, who's just a dude in a bodysuit. <laughs> yeah, but, um, it just says Pepsi on it. I had Cloud for a little bit, but that wasn't very funny. It was just it was just Cloud. So, uh, who else did I have? Oh, Waluigi. I was Waluigi for a long time. Yeah, <laughs> like, the whole time we were kids, you were Waluigi, until we started yeah. actually clearing dungeons. Well, one of the funniest things that could happen would be not really from my perspective because master chief's not that funny but sometimes when you go into a cutscene, you see the character the model is there all the cutscenes are in in engine in game mm -hmm. if i went into a cutscene, philip would see me going through the motions like if your character raised his hands up in the cutscene, you would see me doing that just randomly out of context in the middle of the room sometimes philip would go into a cutscene, and then a few seconds later i would go in the cutscene, and since the cutscenes instantly lock you in the same spot every single time so that the cutscene plays out correctly since i was so much bigger than master chief i would absorb him and <laughs> yeah. so he wouldn't be ex he, like the cutscene would be doing something and then the camera would switch would like cut 
to Master Chief, but instead it's Dompe, and like eight <laughs> times you would just start laughing because it's like it just zooms so in on Dompe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Dompe would be like looking around, opening his mouth, and I'm just like, oh my gosh. Just looking really, because I mean, he did have mouth animation, but it was very poor. Like his jaw was constantly <laughs> yeah. going into the upper part of his face. <laughs> it was very stupid. He always had a dumb look on his face. All right, Nave, let's take a break. Oh yeah, we need to do those. Songs. <laughs> yeah, break time. And we're back. Okay, Nave. How would you review Ocarina of Time, the online mod? The mod is amazing, and it's pretty... Okay, well, I was going to say it's pretty simple to do, but you did all the work for me. You got everything together and gave it to me, so that I had to do... All I had to do is install everything. It wasn't, like, rocket science, though. The server was reliable. I don't think the server ever went down on us, and the server kept our data. Like, our data was was on the server side, I think. Because, like, you would do something... Like, I think you did something and i wasn't in the game like i crashed or something and when i came like you got like a medallion or something and whenever i came back i also had the medallion so i was like okay well good since i was gone it's not like i missed anything like our inventory was basically tethered to each other would you recommend this to other people yeah there's no i mean it's very fun to play these games that aren't meant for co-op with other people it sounds like it would be a blast with 20 people running around i I would it would probably just turn into vr chat (laughs) <laughs> really we would just be playing vr chat at that point with the, the stupid character models yeah because i mean the game itself is not meant for co-op so there's a lot of like annoyances that go along with that like there's no way to like teleport to each other like multiple times we were like i wish i could teleport i think that's one of the reasons why we quit so often like i would be like okay i'm done with this dungeon i'm gonna leave because i'm like i can't i, I wish i could just teleport to you good so i could like just re recoup all of that lost time that yeah. I got, I lost because the ROM is unstable, as as ROMs are sometimes, and so a teleport would be greatly needed. But I would say get this. I mean, it's it's an emulated game, so it's not like you're losing a whole lot if you try it out. And seeing these goofy textures in this beloved game, it's awesome to see. Seeing Pepsi Man kill Ganon. <laughs> I mean. Yeah. Come on. So, Philip, what do you think about this game? What would you review it like? Well, going into it, I knew that I definitely wanted this on our list as soon as I saw like some other people on YouTube playing it. And I'm like, yeah, this looks like so much fun. And plus, I just wanted to play through Ocarina of Time. Would this be the best way to play through for your first time? Mm, probably not. Probably go play the 3D version. Because there was a lot of times where it was, like, it was shorthand. We were like, oh, we need this item. We both know where it is. We run straight there. If you were playing this for your first time it would be much more obtuse and it might be hard to express to another person oh we need to go to the desert but don't forget you need to get the horse or you need to do this like we never had to like be like oh uh, i don't remember how to do this let's like i don't know how to do this it was more like me and they both knew how to play the game and we were just blazing through it so fast so if you're a seasoned player this is a amazing way to re-experience Ocarina of Time. The I main just wish thing we... I would hit on is that if you're a seasoned player, the cheats on this game, we didn't really delve too deeply into them, but they're extensive. Like you yeah, can, There's a lot of stuff. You can give yourself all kinds of different items. You like you can give yourself any different bottle at, immediately and put whatever you want in them. Just the cheats alone is enough to experience this game if you've played this game a bunch because the just the levitate alone being able to levitate and look at things from outside of the boundaries it's amazing i mean the levitate's not very good it's not implemented great but... <laughs> oh yeah it is janky just as well yeah but, but uh, go on sorry no you're good uh just like if you're a seasoned player grab a couple of your boys i wish we had more people to play this with maybe if we get more of a like fan base develop we give you do like a game night you're like hey guys I'll set it up, just, like, just download this from our Google Drive, and then come over and we'll all play through Ocarina of Time one night. Dude, That'd I would absolutely awesome. love to play games like, what is that game? Fall, not Fall Guys, Uh, the dumb game where Gang we're beast? grabbing stuff. Oh, Humans Fall Flat? Human Fall Flat, get like fucking yeah. seven or eight people, get seven or eight listeners together and just screw around on Human Fall Flat. Because yeah, I would love to do a, a game of... night. A lot of the hilarity of that game comes from how violent you can be to your co-op partners. 
you can grab them on their head and pick them up, and then they can grab you and try to pull you down, and you're yanking on each other, yeah. and you're like, let go, running. let go. You're like, you're carrying. I'm like carrying Philip towards the ledge, and I'm trying to throw him off, but Philip's holding on to my shoulder, and I'm like, get off. Get, and you grab him and try to push. It's such a stupid because it's literally just ragdoll physics. The game, and it has a bunch. You can have a bunch of people in there. All right, but to close up my review. TLDR. Have you played this before? Just go get some boys. Look it up. It's called Mod Loader 64 Ocarina of Time Online. Super easy to set up. There's so many YouTube tutorials. I was able to do it from a YouTube tutorial, and then I could just coach Nave through it just by sending him the files. Go out and play this game. If you feel like supporting Mod Loader 64, if you have some programming skills, if you could improve the stability of this, I would definitely play more of it. But we were having multiple crashes. It never really upset me. So if you're somebody that's like, oh, I like if a game's crashed and I can't play it, it's obviously not finished. They're like, yeah, this is janky. It's emulated, but it works. So uh, you want to get into the games that we might play next? Uh, actually, before we touch on that, I think we should hit some schedule changes. So we've been kind of doing a pretty routine schedule at this point. With some minor exceptions, we're only on, what is this, episode 5, 6? I don't even know six. how many episodes we're done. But we've been doing maybe like a review, like this is a review episode, and then we did like a retrospective last week. And then before that, we did Outriders, which was a review. The week before that, we did a retrospective rock band. Rock band. It feels so long ago. But, it does. Yeah. So we plan on kind of keeping the schedule. We find it's hard to play a game in one week because we're both, I don't know, people with jobs. Yeah, we have full-time jobs, and my job sometimes keeps me out until like 6 or 7. Like, I'll, I'll be like an hour away. I had to drive an hour to get back home. And then Philip has school at 6, and I have work at 5. And I'm just like, ooh, we're cutting it. Yeah. <laughs> we're cutting it Yeah, close. if we want to get you know the recommended 8 hours of sleep, we need to be in bed at 10 o'clock, whereas you just got home at 6 o'clock. You haven't eaten. You are probably yeah. uh, like probably exhausted. That's why I like I never like rush you or anything. I'm like, yeah, we really need to play some Ocarina of Time, but we can only get in two hours tonight. You're like, well, two hours is enough to be Water Temple, you know? <laughs> Man, fuck Water Temple, dude. That almost derailed the whole podcast. I was almost I was close. I was like, yeah, like Man, I thought maybe this isn't gonna happen. We were gonna hit a wall there, but we made it through. Our schedule is going to be more closer to that where we're going to have a more discussion-based episode and then we're going to go into a review episode. So our next one's going to be more retrospective. Uh, as far as topics, I'm not really sure if you have anything planned. We haven't really discussed this part. So if we're going to continue with that, our retrospective, we have a wide variety of like things that we can just pull from. Usually those end up being spur-of-the-moment episodes where like the day before we record, it's like, hey, dude, you want to talk about Rock Band? You know what I mean? Or the, yeah. the what was it, what do we call it, Action Sack, where we came up Action with a bunch sack. of random yeah. games. Like arcade uh, games. I think I was just drunk one night, and I was like, man, I wish we could talk about Heavy Weapon. And you were like, yeah, it's not big enough for an episode. And I was like, oh, well, what if we talked about Heavy Weapon and uh, Planets vs. Zombies or something? And then <laughs> you're like, okay, well, maybe. You're very drunk, I don't want to talk about you this right now. <laughs> you know, like, okay, well, and then you came back to me, you're like, we're doing this next week. <laughs> like, as soon as possible. I was like, okay, well, good for, good for me. Yeah. But for our review episode, I put down about three recommends. Co-op Morrowind, which would be pretty similar to this episode, where it's a single-player game that's been modded into a co-op experience. And then Star Wars Battlefront 2, which I've kind of scouted out the co-op. I think the campaign might be co-op, but not confirmed. But there is a full multiplayer co-op mode. But it seems to be basically like four-man firefight with like special objectives thrown in the mix. Where yeah. it's like siege the spaceship where you work from the hangar all the way to the core where you blow up the ship. Which is pretty cool, but it, there's no story to it. We we can probably still talk about it, maybe just talk about Star Wars in general. And then now that I'm in my new hotel room, we haven't tried Vermintide 2 yet. And that's a game you've really been wanting to hit into. And I've also wanted to play it. So I have it installed now. I, we just haven't tested it yet. So. Um, yeah, Vermintide 2. Oh, man. It's been jonesing. Been jonesing. <laughs> it's been installed um, for a while. One thing I wanted to play really bad. I've been ta I've been every fucking time we get together. I, base I think I bring this up since you talked about it. But Dark Souls remastered. Yeah. I desperately want... Dark, Dark Souls 1 is the only one I never beat. I c completely full-on rage quit. 
on Ornstein and Smog both times I've played it. When I was in high school and then like two years ago when I played it, played the 360 version on backwards compat. And I rage quit, man. I just could I was like, dude, I, I have no patience for this, especially as an adult. I have so much little patience. But when you play that game co op, it's it really takes a lot of pressure off of you. It's a whole nother person for enemies to try and kill, which means that you have a little bit of breathing room. And you, in particular, have been telling me that Dark Souls 1 is one of your favorite games of all time. I th yeah, think. I think it might be my number one. After playing through Ocarina of Time, which I always counted as my number one, I think Dark Souls 1 is better than Ocarina. Well, I would hope so, because it's a lot more recent. <laughs> I would be sad. <laughs> I would be like, oof. I don't I know, mean, some people are committed to the nostalgia. They're like, it's perfect. It's a masterpiece. Well, no, yeah. masterpieces can have flaws. Not every masterpiece to, is perfect. I used to make fun of people who would say that their favorite game of all time is like Tetris. And then I started playing Tetris Effect, which is just Tetris, but beautiful, with beautiful yeah. music, which play that. It's on Game Pass. Play it. Okay. Download that and play it on Game Pass with your headset on. Turn out all is the Tetris, lights. Is it co-op? Mm, no. Are you sure? I, I don't know. I thought that was the one that had the two bodies on the cover. I have no idea. There is. Okay. A, oh, as a matter of fact, there's an online mode now. I have no idea what it is though, because because no one wants to play Tetris with me. But um, it's so sad. But it is amazing. Uh, it's an amazing experience, especially if you just get a, get a couple brewskis in you, just turn the turn everything down, play it at night, have your TV right in front of you, and just have all of these ex these explosions and th music things happening in front of you. Uh, it's it's good. It's good stuff. All right. Well, it looks like we have a couple choices lined up. So you ready to call it quits on this one? I mean, yeah. We should, this is a this has been a long right. episode. It's gonna be we're a long at, I edit. don't know. Yeah, I don't know how long the edit's gonna be, but we are at two hours and ten minutes right now. Yikes. <laughs> this is this is about as long as the rock band one went, but the rock band one we had tons of issues. Like most of the things that made the recording really long, it was like a bunch of lag issues and stuff that were just blanket edited out or whatever. I'm starting to like <laughs> we're spiraling. Yeah, All right, sorry, let's wrap it up to you. To speak. Hey, co-op partners at home, we're always looking for more comments or emails from you. So please email in at gametogetherpod at gmail.com. We have a Twitter and a Facebook. I haven't seen anything posted on there, which I haven't been posting anything. So my bad too. Maybe yeah, I'll, we have a I'll start posting well. memes. I, I am always like a week behind on the YouTube side because what happens is we are just upload Red Circle, it makes a YouTube video for us. It's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. And so... You just, you just click on a thing that says the, make a video vi version or whatever. And so I click on that. It takes like an hour to make for some reason to like render it or whatever. So I'll click on that. Forget about it for like six days. Then we're doing something <laughs> related to the podcast. And I will go, oh shit, I didn't upload a YouTube video. And so I need to go. So the YouTube channel is almost always like five to seven days behind. And then the Twitter is like three days behind the youtube channel so we're not doing very good on the social media side yeah but uh, but i did record most of our uh, zelda playthrough so i'm might try to do a highlight edit of that i don't know if i can edit down the 12 hour gameplay footage in a couple days while editing the podcast not gonna happen yeah i would focus on the podcast and yeah. then like to make it a little side project editing that thing together because it would be nice like you were saying it'd be a good learning experience for you to get used to the video, video editing, editing side. again because i haven't yeah. edited videos in a pretty long time all right, well, let's wrap it up. This has been Gaming Together Podcast. Thanks for joining us, co-op partners. And can't wait to play with you again next time. See ya. See ya. Hey, co-op partners. Philip here. After hearing Nave talk about his sweet ocarina playing on his PUBG video, I had to check it out. It was so good I had to share it with you guys. So I'm proud to present... Arms of an Angel, performed by Knave on Ocarina. Wow.